good morning students and uh, welcome to the class of english today i your english teacher welcomes you all in this session in which i'm going to teach you the new chapter the mother's day children in this chapter i'm going to focus especially on mother and her rights all right children so we all have mothers and they do a lot for us but how much we revert back to them means how much we pay back to them that is the essential part of this chapter generally it happens that uh, mother gets neglected in the family and uh, whatever her rights are there they get suppressed all right children so let's begin this chapter so mother's day is a hilarious drawing room comedy by jb priestley and it raises a serious issue and deals with it in a humorous manner the comic undertone however does not belittle the importance of the issues raised in the play so it's a funny play children mother's day hilarious means uh, funny the word hilarious uh, it means uh, funny all right so it's a drawing room comedy it's a play by jb priestley and uh, it raises a very serious issue in a very comic manner but uh, dealing with a serious issue in a comic manner does not just belittle the importance of the topic so let me introduce you with the main characters of this play so this play mainly focuses miss mrs annie pearson who is a devoted wife and a doting mother she is a pleasant but worried looking woman in her 40s and uh, her neighborhood lady is there mrs fizzerald and uh, she is a fortune teller fortune teller and we also say children sooth sayer uh let me tell you the spelling s o o t h s a y e r so sooth sayer or fortune teller means uh, the same thing that is one who tells the future so mrs fizzerald has learned some kind of black magic when she uh, was there in south africa with her husband being posted there so that's why she is able to tell the future she tells mrs pearson to make up her mind and assert herself if she wants to be the mistress of her own house and boss of her own family as these two ladies children the first lady is mrs pearson and second lady is mrs fizzerald so these two ladies were friends all right these two ladies were friends and uh, when mrs fizzerald came to know about the condition of mrs pearson so she tells her let you make up your mind and if you want to be the boss of your family you have to take some strict action now at present mrs pearson is reduced to the status of an unpaid domestic servant who does all the domestic chores without even being requested for them or thanked later on and she is taken for granted and ordered about see children this is the condition of every mother in the family what happens the mother is considered as an unpaid domestic servant who does all the household jobs and what she gets in return salary no even she does not get thanks and she is taken for granted and ordered about means nobody takes care that what she likes Mrs Fitzgerald tells her husband that uh, 
husbands sons and daughters should take notice of wives and mothers not giving them orders and treating like a granted person mrs pin pearson endures the ill treatment because she is very fond of her husband and children though they are quite thoughtless and selfish so mrs pearson just was bearing all these things because she loved her family very much her husband her children and though all the th- uh, the persons whether husband or children all were quite thoughtless and selfish they were busy in their lives they did not bother about the mother they wanted that all the things should be done for them she tries her best to have it out with them but does not know how to begin she wants to get tea things uh, ready as the members of family are about to drop in mrs fizzle asks her to let them wait or look after themselves for once so mrs fizzle asks and she just you know uh, tells her various things mrs pearson could do but uh, since mrs pearson is too soft towards her family she is not able to do all those things now mrs fizzle now offers a way out that is black magic and what was according to that she suggests a change of personalities for a short duration and mrs pearson is doubtful about the success of the plan but yields with the help of magic spell learned in the east mrs fizzle carries out an interchange of personalities now mrs pearson having the personality of a neighbor becomes bold and dominating and mrs fizzle is nervous in fluttering so just with the help of black magic mrs fizzle what does she do she just changed her personality with mrs pearson now the body was of mrs pearson but from inside she was mrs fizzle and similarly mrs fizzle's body was there but from inside she was mrs pearson and uh, thereby now mrs pearson who was very timid and soft lady now turns out to be a bold and dominating and now mrs fizzle turns out to be nervous and fluttering now let's uh, deal with now the family members here comes the main part how now and it's a very comical as well as uh, humorous part also children because now the mother who was thought to be very kind and uh, soft and doing everything now when she changes when she changes her attitude then comes a real comedy of this chapter doris pearson a pretty girl actually she is uh, the daughter of mrs pearson and in her early 20s is the first to face the cool and incisive mother as usual doris the spoiled girl asks her mother about her yellow silk dress so doris comes inside the house and she asks her mother uh, where is my yellow silk dress so mrs pearson keeps on smoking and doris is astounded astounded means children astounded means shocked so astounded means shocked so doris was shocked that earlier her mother didn't smoke but now she is smoking so it was a big shock for her but she asks mother have you prepared tea in the kitchen and mrs pearson what she says to her you know the answer was very different so she tells her politely to have it wherever she likes so mrs pearson says that if you want to drink tea just go in the kitchen and make yourself now doris angrily asked her if it isn't ready so mrs pearson tells her that she has had what she wanted she surprises her with the remark that she might go out later at a, at a square meal at the clarendon when doris angrily asks her mother again whether she has ironed her yellow silk dress mrs pearson tells her that she puts in twice the hours she does and gets no wages or thanks for it so first the doris pearson asks for tea so mother says go and prepare yourself in the same way when the doris asks for the uh, had she ironed the yellow silk dress so uh, she says that no i have done my job and uh, out of those working hours i don't get any wages or salary and then even no thanks for it then the mother criticizes the boyfriend uh, of doris pearson that is charlie spin as uh, having buck teeth and being 
half fitted buck teeth means all the teeth coming out of the mouth and half fitted means in hindi mad person so she tells doris frankly that at her age she would have found someone better than charlie spence so in this way doris was totally shocked by the behavior of her mother as totally a changed person now it is the turn of sir pearson the spoiled brat so a spoiled brat children means brat means a boy so he is the son of uh, mrs pearson all right so doris is the daughter and sir is the son so he was also a spoiled person he came inside and he also asked for tea as soon as he entered since he has got a busy night that night he asks his mother if she has put his things out and he reminds her of her promise she tells him that she doesn't like mending he objects to her talking like that mrs pearson gives him a bit of her mind she tells him that they all do talk like that if there is something at home he doesn't want to do he doesn't do it if it is something at his workplace he gets the union to bar it she says that she has also joined the movement she then asks if they have any stout left she goes to the kitchen to bring a bottle as she wants to drink now so the mother says to cyril pearson when he asks for the tea that cyril when you are in the office you get everything and if you don't get any right of yours you make union so now i have also decided to do the same thing the same behavior i am going to do with you at home now i have also joined the same movement and as he says that is there any stout left stout children is a kind of fish all right so she goes to the kitchen then she wants uh, to drink something so she brings a bottle now cyril and doris go into a huddle and whisper about the behavior of their mother so both son and daughter they are very surprised at the behavior of her mother and they both whisper with each other doris states that she could not believe her eyes as she found her mother smoking and playing cards when she came in cyril had asked her if she was feeling off color and she we said she wasn't doris observed that she suddenly all different she made her cry not only by what she said but by the way she said it and looked doris think that she has a concussion as a result of falling cyril asks if she has become slightly crazy the oral summarization of this para is children that they think that their mother has gone crazy she has gone mad due to uh, some kind of accident when she fell down meanwhile mrs pearson comes back she is carrying a bottle of stout and a half filled glass cyril and doris try to stop their guffawing and giggling so both son and daughter were laughing and they were making fun of their mother and when she this they saw their mother coming back with fish and uh, wine then mrs pearson regarded them with contempt and asked them to behave according to their age so now mrs pearson is scolds very badly she says to both the son and daughter that you behave according to your age and then she finds nothing funny in their jokes doris is cheerful again listening to that doris again starts crying she wants to know what they have done mrs pearson at once tells them that they have done some nothing they simply come in and ask for something go out again and then come back when there is nothing else to go so uh, mrs pearson says that uh, uh uh when what they do they do nothing they just go out then come back and then they go out no important work they do so cyril tells her aggressively that he'll find something to eat himself if she won't get tea ready mrs pearson tells him to help himself when cyril and doris say that they have been working all day so mrs pearson says to them that now you help yourself and when cyril and doris say that they have been working all day mrs pearson says that she has also done her 8 hours so when uh, cyril and doris they you know 
assert that they have been working all day. So Mrs. Pearson says that yes, you are working all day, but I have also done my eight hours. And uh, she further says that now it will be forty hours week for all, and she will have done. She will have her two days off at the weekend. So now Mrs. Pearson turns out to be a logical person, and she demands her every right as an employee. Now the third character in the story was the husband. George Pearson, a solemn, self-important, and pompous-looking man, about fifty enters. So the husband was fifty years old. He was a little bit fatty, and uh, he was also a self-important person. Means self-important means he only busy with his own needs. He notices Doris in tears, and then his wife sipping stout. So when the husband sees that uh, Doris is crying. and the wife is eating fish he is bewildered at her behavior so now it's a time for the husband to get shocked so bewildered means children uh shocked all right so now the husband gets shocked he informs her that he won't have any tea as there is a special snooker match at night at the club and a bit of supper so husband clearly says to his wife that uh, today i will not have tea at home and uh, the supper supper means the last meal of the day all right children so supper means last meal of the day so what is the last meal of the day exactly it is dinner generally uh, dinner and supper are synonyms of each other so the husband says that uh, i will not have tea at home because i'm going out to play snooker and uh, in the at the club and uh, i will have dinner there only now he surprised at her answer when pearson says that there is no tea she tells him that people laugh at him at the club and call him pompy ompy So now Mrs. Pearson uh, tells her husband, "You go to club, you play with them, but do you know what your friends uh, say to you, and what do what they say about you? That you are a pompy pompy person because you are very fat." Now Pearson, because he is slow and pompous, George is horrified. So he wants to know why he wants to spend so much time at a place where they are always laughing at him because he's behind his back and calling his names. He leaves his wife alone at home each night. George is dazed and asks Cyril for confirmation. He staggers as Cyril confirms it. So now George was again amazed, shocked, and then he asked his son Cyril, "Is your mother all right?" So Cyril says, "No." Cyril tells his mother that it is not fair of her to hurt his or his father's feelings. Mrs. Pearson remarks that something it does. People good to have their feeling hurt. So Cyril tells uh, to her mother that mother, it's not good that you are hurting my father's feeling. So Mrs. Pearson remarks that sometimes it's very good if you hurt someone. The truth oughtn't to hurt anybody for long. If he didn't go to clubs so often, but if people would stop laughing at him, Cyril doubts it. His mother tells him that he knows nothing. He spends a lot of time and money at greyhound races, dirt tracks, and ice shows. So Mrs. Pearson says that uh, if he doesn't go to club, definitely people will not laugh at him. What he does there? He just spends time and money at greyhound races, dirt tracks, and ice shows, thereby wasting his time. Mrs. Fitzgerald is at the door. Cyril calls her silly old bag. Mrs. Pearson tells him to ask her in and address her properly. Mrs. Fitzgerald is shocked to see how Mrs. Pearson is treating her husband and children. Now, when Mrs. Pe- now it's the entry of Mrs. Fitzgerald, and when she comes, now children remember that Mrs. Fitzgerald is now exactly Mrs. Pearson. Now, Mrs. Fitzgerald was shocked at how Mrs. Pearson is treating her family. Children now don't get confused because they have exchanged their personalities. Now. George re-enters and sits inside an armchair, smoking his pipe. Mrs. Pearson takes George to task 
for being impolite. George flares up as she rebukes him in presence of their neighbor. So you see, Mrs. Fitzgerald was there, who was exactly Mrs. Pearson. And Mrs. Pearson was, you know, she was uh, scolding her husband in front of her neighbor. Mrs. Pearson threatens to slap his face and if he says that again. So George, the husband starts uh, rebuking the wife in presence of their neighbor. So Mrs. Pearson says that if you will talk too much, I will give a slap on your face. And she mockingly asks him to leave for the club. And then she says to the husband, you go and join the club. Now all this is too much for Mrs. Fitzgerald with Mrs. Pearson's personality. Children, remember this thing, to bear. So now exactly who was Mrs. Pearson in the body of Mrs. Fitzgerald, it was difficult for her to, you know, bear all these things because she was a very timid, kind and polite lady and she loved her family. So she requests uh, Mrs. Fitzgerald for a reversal to the original state. And then with the chanting of magic spell, they regain their original personalities. Now Mrs. Fitzgerald is Mrs. Fitzgerald and Mrs. Pearson is Mrs. Pearson. Now then Mrs. P Fitzgerald again asks Mrs. Pearson that I have taught a lesson to your family. Now don't be timid. Don't be rude, but don't be timid also. All right. This formula will work. Mrs. Pearson says that she wants them to stop at home sometimes, give her a hand and with supper, and play a nice game of rummy. So Mrs. Fitzgerald is about to leave and she is glad to see Mrs. Pearson handling her family firmly. The trick works and all the members of the family agree to do whatever she says. So see in this way children Mrs. Pearson taught a lesson to her family members who were cold towards her, who did not consider about her feelings. So that's all in this chapter children. Now let's uh, discuss some important sort answer type questions. I am much obliged, says Mrs. Pearson. What for does uh, she feel obliged and to whom? The children, Mrs. Pearson feels obliged to Mrs. Fitzgerald for telling her fortune. And she thinks it quite wonderful having a real fortune teller living next door. What fortune does Mrs. Fitzgerald predict to for me, Mrs. Pearson? So Mrs. Fitzgerald is quite equivocal in her predictions. She says it could be a good fortune or a bad one. All depends on Mrs. Pearson herself and she asks her to decide firmly. Her fortune depends on it. Children, uh, as we know that our fortune is in our hands, whatever and how, which way we will just take our present, that will decide our future. What problem does Mrs. Pearson face and who do you think is responsible for this state of affairs? So Mrs. Pearson devotes all her time and energy to serve her husband, son and daughter. These thoughtless and selfish persons go out every night to enjoy themselves, leaving Mrs. Pearson alone at home. And she is not no better than a housemaid. And Mrs. Pearson herself is responsible for the ill treatment, neglect and lack of concern shown to her. Because she did not just uh, made them realize her value. Actually she was working but she should make the person in front of her Realize her value. What course of action does Mrs. Fitzgerald suggest to Mrs. Pearson to tackle the situation? So Mrs. Fitzgerald tells Mrs. Pearson to decide firmly and stick to her decisions and she must assert her position and become the real mistress of the house. Her own initiative can help her and she must let them wait or look after themselves at once. Now what difficulty does Mrs. Pearson face while dealing with the various members of her family? So Mrs. Pearson loves her husband and children too much and she does not find courage enough to discuss the problem with them. She only keeps dropping hints. She hates any unpleasantness. She does not want, no, she does not want to, to, does not know where to start. Actually, this was the problem which Mrs. Pearson was facing. Then let me do it, suggests Mrs. Fitzgerald. How does Mrs. Pearson react to it? So Mrs. Fitzgerald offers to deal with the family for Mrs. Pearson and tease them to treat her properly. So Mrs. Pearson feels flustered. She thanks her saying that it wouldn't do at all. They would resent being ill-treated by someone else and wouldn't listen. It is the time when Mrs. Fitzgerald asks Mrs. Pearson, now give me a chance, I will deal with the family. 
how does mrs fizral plan to deal with the family of mrs pearson so she tells mrs pearson that she will deal with her family not as herself but as mrs pearson only so no need to worry i will handle your family as mrs as you only so don't worry we will change personalities why does doris pearson feels astounded on returning home so she feels astounded because mother was smoking and when she asked about her yellow silk dress and tea the mother's behavior was totally blasting what are two reasons that annoy doris pearson so, so that is there same answer how does mrs pearson refute doris's argument about working hard so mrs pearson tells doris that she has a good idea about uh, how much doris does mrs pearson claims that she puts in twice the hours that doris does and gets no pay or thanks for it clear children no need for explanation because the answer is quite clear how does mrs pearson criticize doris on going out with charlie spence so what does she say that charlie spence at her age if she would be there she would have found someone more better than charlie spence charlie spence is buck teeth and half witted all right so this is the answer which the mrs pearson gives to doris about charlie spence so children that's all in this video and uh, we will meet next time where we will discuss some new things till then thank you and goodbye